to really move things a little bit further. But it's about time that we have a more positive action. Mm. We, we should not really allow the Russians, the Turks, and the Iranians to decide the fate of Syria. That's not um, acceptable, yani. that's really um, un unbelievable. Mm. And we should not really allow the Americans with, uh, with the Russians to decide the fate of the Palestinians and so on. We have to move on. Mm. So my, my point is, I think we are re-emerging. I think the shadow of Egypt is being felt. I think we have to make things a little bit you know, more different. Well, That's in true. that case, I will uh, uh, quote Niccolo Machiavelli, mm. who said it's very dangerous to be neutral. Um, mm. We have to take sides in this confrontation that is taking place. It's a life of death confrontation. But we are taking sides. The Egyptian With, position is loud and clear. It's uh, not condoning or supporting what's taking place. For example, for the question of Syria, we have to endorse the return of the legitimate Syrian uh, representatives to the Arab League, for example, their seat is empty. This is, not, this is, I can't imagine that we're still permitting that. They have to have their embassy here. We have to take these bold sides. We, uh, everyone is saying, well, they're falling in the hands of the Iranians as they did with Iraq. Why should they f f fall in, in the hands of the Egyptians? I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling you by geopolitical strategy, I'm not telling, telling that to control the, the decision of the Syrian people, but to offer a new alternative. If they won't find the Arab countries fighting beside them, I'm saying diplomatically, they will they will. You mean their go. presence, their lack of presence in the Arab League and is a show Arab, of no support? We, of course, and, and their absence of embassy also of uh, the government of them at Damascus. Why we didn't take these bold steps to say, well, this is our position now, um, I think that um, uh, with time, we will, ha as we have taken position with General Khalifa Haftar in Libya, mm. we have to voice it again and again to the, to the uh, Western diplomacy that he's a, uh, he's a person who ought to be a representative right now. Uh, I think the same thing should be uh, um, dealt with in Syria. Being neutral doesn't correspond to Egypt's position. We, we cannot permit ourselves but to Egypt was not neutral. As she said, Egypt was not neutral. I'm, I'm saying that we had to... Because we're not the decision makers in the Arab League. I mean, this is a, well, a collective we, decision. Uh, we, we, we have um, a way to make a pressure in a way or another. We have a way to make our voice heard. We are capable of doing that all over the region in the Middle East. It's a nasty neighborhood. We all know that. It's very dangerous, yes. And we were, uh, we were severely hit during the uh, so-called Arab Spring. But still, I think that one of the things that we should do now is that we voice a clear position about these prospects. I I'm, I'm very uh, sad that... So, so you don't think our position is clear vis-a-vis -vis those issues? The I Syrian mean, position... The Syrian it's quite clear. Egypt the, is supporting the, Sy the Syrian uh, government, the Syrian people's right to make their own decision, but the Syrian people. Of not course the Syrian people. The, the, the people that are <laughs> of course the out there people, fighting. But we, 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 we tasted from the same cup the terrorists coming from outside, the people who are, who are fighting the regime there, they're not really Syrians. They're exactly, not 100%. Exactly, which is why we're saying we're for and the we're Syrian. suffering the same, from the same point in, in, in Sinai. So I think that, uh, no, it's, we have to have a clearer voice because our, posi our you position... You still don't feel we have a, that the message of the Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian position is clear vis-a-vis -vis this issue? Why not call, for example, for such conferences in Egypt? Invite Walid al Mualim, for example, and all these... Let me uh, and try to find here a solution a here. Let me say that, you know, the actual situation in, in Syria is very complicated. Mm, of course. And yes. even if, you know, at this particular point, you have the Iranians are very much penetrating the, 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 entire, the entire country and, you know, yes. the forces around Bashar al-Assad are more or less a lot of Shia and, uh, and Iranian groups. Mm. In addition, the Russians are there, in addition to the other groups who are there, Hezbollah and so on. So the situation is very, very complicated. It's not only supporting the, uh, the Syrian government, or the Syrian people, is trying to find out what can we do out of this puzzle. And the puzzle is so difficult to, to resolve. Why? If you are now <coughs> going to come back and say, well, we would like Bashar al-Assad and his government to come back to the Arab League and to the Arab uh, you know, uh, you know, camp, 
in, and, but you, we, have, we have a very, very clear condition, which is that all the foreign powers inside the Syria should at least withdraw or should be reduced. Now, is he able to make the decision? And can, how can we move into this direction? So it's, the situation is not as easy. It's a very complicated thing, but it needs a strategy to move step by step to try to regain mm. what has been lost in terms of the, the role of the Arab countries in, in the game and to try to really regain stability in, in Syria itself. Mm. Um, gentlemen, um, uh, the fact that um, we have two main um, Western players, the United States mm -hmm. and Russia in this region, and a number of um, other players, Qatar, um, Iran, and Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, does this provide a conducive environment for us to operate, when I say us as in Egypt, to operate, to um, reconnect the Arab rank and file? Do you see this as feasible? And one minute each, because I need to wrap up. Egypt has been a very, very skillful player during the Cold War, mm. when it, with, during Nasser era and Sadat yes. era, they tried to play you know, the two superpowers against each other. It's about time that we regain that strategy and to try to use this uh, bargaining strategy with the, with the great powers. But I think now the situation is too complicated and, and we need very careful examining of our steps in the future. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shif. I think that we are uh, heading, yes, for a, a tense confrontation, especially in this region between the two superpowers. Yes. But I think that uh, Egypt uh, is, is beginning to be very well prepared. We have uh, uh, extraordinary uh, army now defending our gas fields in the Mediterranean. We won't fall to any intimidations. I think that the forthcoming years will be about the legacy of President Sisi. So much people outside will try to snare traps for him, but he is capable of uh, keeping the exact image that he had before. Uh, so I think that uh, we will choose Calvary our camp, but usually we have seen now who betrayed us during the Arab Spring. And as President Sisi said before, we know who betrayed us and who stand with us. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's clear now who, is, who are our true allies now. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank you both gentlemen for your fruitful input. I'd like to thank you, the viewers, and we'll see you same time next week. Until then, good night.